Right. So uh, in the next session, which uh, we will try to do within like uh, two, two and a half hours, because it's a kind of a lengthy session, uh, we are trying to analyze the tracker data using event reports. So uh, event reports is a tool in DHIS2, which uh, you might be really familiar if you have used DHIS2 or you have even uh, attended previous academies. But we will try to explain the basics uh, on how to use DH, uh, DHS to even reports and uh, uh, like what you can do with it. And then we will uh, try to take some examples, different use cases, different scenarios, and analyze the data which is already there in our demo instance using the event reports. So the uh, objectives of uh, the, the lesson is to describe the functions of the event reports app and to explain the difference between events and enrollment reports. And design event reports using the tracker data. Describe the differences between how repeated and non-repeated stage data is displayed. And to design event reports showing data from multiple tracker uh, program stages. So these are the five learning objectives we, ha we have for this lesson. And we will try to do uh, cover all of them using uh, the presentation as well as live demonstrations. So uh, uh, during the demonstration, I will uh, try to demonstrate a few steps at a time. And then uh, you are expected to go through the learning guide and then uh, do it, uh, practice it after me. So that's what we are going to do. And finally, at the end of this session, uh, you will have to do the graded assignments on event reports, which will be made visible uh, at the end of the session. Right. Okay. So first of all, um, the event reports app is basically an analytics tool in DHIS2, and it enables analysis of events in two ways. Now, you are you must be really familiar with the concept of events and what's the you know like. Uh, if, um, how the events are related to the track entity instance and the tracker data model, which we covered on the first day. So uh, when we analyze the data, we have two ways. First is pivot table type analysis. The pivot table style analysis is where we are trying to produce aggregated values of the events which are there uh, in the tracker. So as you can see here in this table uh, on the top that uh, here we have a ta uh, tabular output. So we have a table with uh, rows and columns. And if you focus on the different rows and columns, you will see like this is this uh, this output is similar to what we usually see when we are using the pivot table app of DHIS2. So you have uh, certain data elements or attributes in the rows, and then probably one or more than one uh, data element to attribute uh, as columns. And you can see a kind of a comparison based on a combination. So for example, you can see here uh, uh, how many like uh, doses of a particular vaccine has been uh, given to the males and female. So it's always a combination. AstraZeneca vaccine, how many doses given for the females, how many for the males. So this is exactly what we do in, in our aggregate pivot table. So similarly, based on tracker data, we can create a pivot table inside the event reports app. So that's the first type of output that we can generate. The second, in fact, like a very unique one for the event report is to produce a line list or list of events based on queries and filters. So as you can see in the table um, at the bottom, here we have like uh, 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 all these rows that we have here are different or separate events. So you can see like uh, a dose that was given on uh, on a particular date uh, and uh, like when this event has been registered, what's the incident date, what's the org unit, and then the first name, surname, gender, and the vaccine name. So here, all the events based on the criteria that we define are listed out. This becomes very useful in case when we want to obtain a tabular output or a, a output, uh, say for example, like a, uh, like a, a spreadsheet from the DHIS2 so that you can do other analysis outside DHIS2 or as well as uh, uh, for record keeping purposes. So you know, like in most of the health facilities, even though we have the data in DHIS2 as lines, uh, 
they prefer to also keep a copy of uh, of of the uh, events uh, that that took place uh, yeah, probably as a spreadsheet so this is served uh, by this second functionality that we have of line listing right uh, so these reports or, or the tables that we create in event reports can be saved as a favorite just like what we do in pivot table and you can download it as a csv file or excel or there are even other formats and also you can save it and add, add it to the dhis2 dashboard so these are the three functions in addition um, to visualizing within the uh, event report app we can do using uh, the built-in event reports app of dhis2 right so few things that you have to keep in mind the event report or basically an event report is always based on a program, right? So that means that this is very important to remember, like uh, say for example, even though this is not uh, directly possible using the DHS to tracker capture, because when you are trying to register a tracker, a tracked entity instance in DHS to tracker capture, you're always registering that person uh, uh, for, a, I mean, not only you are registering, you are enrolling directly that person to a program. But conceptually, you can create track entity instances uh, without enrolling in a program. This I'm not going to go into too much of depth because it's a kind of advanced concept and it's not directly supported. But if you are kind of using the DHS to web API for different um, uh, web applications or integrations, this is one possibility. But usually in event reports, when we are using, it always uh, like produce an output based on a program. So you will only see people who have been enrolled, who have an enrolled, uh, enrollment in the program. Okay, And then whatever the analysis uh, that we do is based on a range of dimensions and filters, uh, which is a kind of a combination of data elements, periods, and organization units. So you know very well the uh, three dimensions, the three main dimensions in THIS2, which are what, when, and where. So here the what is represented more by the data elements as well as attributes. Uh, and then period and organization unit. And when you are working with tracker data, another thing that you have to keep in mind, which we uh, explained on day one, is that we have these two concepts called events and enrollment. So let's discuss a bit more in detail what are the differences between events and enrollments, which you already know, and how it is applicable um, when we are trying to analyze data using the uh, DHS has two event reports. Any questions as of now? I hope not. This is, I mean, I have been only explaining uh, concepts, but you will have probably a few more clarifications when we are doing the demonstration. Fine. So now this is something that you have to focus very clearly uh, because it might be a bit confusing to understand the difference. Like it's very basic, although. So the tracker programs as I mentioned to you on day one, can have one or more than one program stages, right? And each of this program stage will have more one or more events, okay? And when we are creating an output of event type, so uh, if you can remember I mentioned, we can create two types of outputs in uh, event reports. One is event type, the other one is enrollment type. So when we are creating outputs of event type, then we can see the data from all events within a single program stage that we are working with, right? So I will demonstrate it further, but as you can see here in this table below, you see like uh, that they have, I mean, in this table, we have selected something called the table style as pivot table. And uh, again, we have, uh, we have another thing called output type. And the output type, we have option to select event or enrollment. But when you select event, what we are like, uh, what it will do is like, it will kind of take into consideration all the events within that program stage. Okay. And we cannot, however, weave or summarize data from multiple program stages when we are using this output type. So, for example, if you can remember, our uh, case based surveillance program had uh, multiple program stages. But when we are using this event type output, you can only select a single program stage and visualize the data which are related to that stage only. 
you cannot be combining out uh, data that is coming from multiple st program stages and generating a report, a report or a table when you are using this event output type. Please remember that, right? Because this is like, you might have this question, like, okay, I tried to use events, but uh, unfortunately I can't combine the, the, say for example, the output, the, the, the COVID output and the COVID test results. Why? That is because the output and the test results are in two different program stages. So if you are uh, actually, uh, going to do that, you have to use the other output type, which is enroll. Okay. So I think it's quite simple, but can be confusing if you don't uh, focus well. Right. Okay. Um, the next is the enrollment type output. So what this enrollment type output allows you to do is to analyze data and visualize them across multiple program stages. Say for example, you have in this uh, case-based awareness program, three or four uh, program stages, and you want to generate a table which has the test result and the outcome. Okay, Test results are in one program stage and outcome data is in another program stage. Then if you want to display it, you have to use the type enrollments and not event. And also like uh, you can visualize across an entire enrollment within the program. Okay, meaning like if you want to produce a table output, okay, and even probably generate a line list, which has patient's name, age, some attributes, and then uh, like some clinical examination from stage one, then something about lab request from stage two, uh, uh, about the lab result from stage three and the outcome from stage four. This is the type that you have to remember. But still we have one limitation in the present version of event reports, which is in case if there are repeatable program stages, say for example, uh, the lab request is a repeatable program stage, right? So you can order many lab, uh, lab samples using request forms. <clears throat> It, in, if that is the case, when you use the event, uh, sorry, enrollment type output, it will only consider the most recent event for this output, right? So this is one major limitation is because like, say for example, you might have ordered um, five test results, uh, test, test samples, and the results are available from uh, three of them. And samples could be serum, nasopharyngeal swabs, urine, like uh, it could be different types, but then, and uh, your results may have only come for serum and you have outcome of uh, uh, like uh, the patient discharge, it will not really make too much sense if the, if the events don't tally between the stages. Say for example, you may have, you may uh, get a kind of output uh, from a urine sample request but the latest uh, event for the program stage, uh, uh, the test result may be for a blood sample, right? So then uh, those are the two that will be displaying on the table. So that's one limitation. Uh, you have to keep that in mind when you are designing your tracker program. Of course, designing tracker programs is out of this, uh, out of the scope of this uh, academy. We have a separate academy coming up probably uh, in December for this. So please enroll yourself uh, into that one so where we can talk more about uh, configuration of tracker. But like, I just wanted to mention you this. I hope it is clear. Any questions? But still having said that, this is uh, one very useful output that we can uh, use to produce tab uh, tabular, um, to obtain data in a tabular format from DHIS2. Right, so with that, we come to the end of the presentation and let's move on to uh, the demonstration. So I'll stop sharing. Questions? No, I suppose. And I and I hope I was audible both throughout. Okay. Right. So uh, now let me log into our demo instance. And I'm sharing my screen. Right. So now we are in the demo instance that we usually use. And um, so 
right. Okay. So how to navigate to the event reports app? What you have to do is you have to click on this apps icon here and go to event reports, right? And uh, one more thing I, I must tell you, um, uh, please do not use the tracker capture or capture application to enter any data, uh, uh, like at least for today and probably tomorrow, uh, because like um, some of the graded assignments that we are using, because like what we did was like, we changed the default sharing settings so that you can, if you wanted uh, in the first, first two days, so that you can go there and um, use this uh, tracker capture app, app and see how it works, right? But the thing is now um, for the assignments, we'll be uh, depending on some outputs that have been pre-configured. So this uh, outputs again will be kind of altered in case if you start entering data. One thing we can do is we can uh, update the sharing settings so that uh, you will not be able to enter data using tracker capture and capture application, but we don't want to let you do that so that you can always go there and see what is there. But uh, uh, let's see, just wanted to mention you, uh, don't try to enter any data into tracker capture because some of our outputs that we are producing uh, for the analytics, uh, the assignments are based on the data which is already uh, captured in the system. Okay, All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the event reports app. And when I do that, this is what I get. So here you can see like we have um, two main parts of the screen, one uh, larger portion onto your right, and then we have this left side. So left side is where we are configuring our output. And this uh, white area here is where your output is going to be displayed, okay? So here you can see like we can first of all select the table style as I mentioned in the presentation, whether it should be a pivot table or a line list and the output type, whether it has to be event type output or the enrollment type, type output, please um, try to uh, remind the difference uh, between the two types of output. And then here we have to select the program, right? That is because like, this large portion is where we are configuring the data dimension or the what dimension of DHIS2. And then here we can select the periods. So period, you can select uh, fixed or relative periods, as you can see here. Or else you can even uh, select dates based on start and end dates, right? So that uh, you our uh, configuration here changes for us to uh, select a starting date and end date. And then, of course, we have the organization units, just like uh, as in any other outputs where we have the entire work unit tree, which is visible. And here uh, on your right side, you have your controls, like this update button is, uh, is what uh, creates the visualization based on the configuration that you do here. And in favorites here, we can open an already saved output. Layout is where you are configuring the columns and rows and filters in your table. And of course, uh, uh, in options, you have few options to uh, fine tune your table. So for example, there are options to uh, visualize the row and column uh, totals. And in case, if you want to get rid of uh, empty rows, you have some controls there. And download, of course, it's disabled now because we don't have output is, where, is uh, what you use when you want to download this uh, table as a uh, Excel output. Okay. So probably because you are already familiar with this, uh, uh, I mean, how to use tables in DHIS2, let's try to um, focus on one example. So what I will try to do now is to open an existing or already saved visualization. So I'm going to click on favorites and click open. And then I will select um, the output confirmed cases by age and sex. Do we have it here? Yes, this one. So once I click, on that one, because this one is already saved in DHS2 based on or pre -con uh, already configured uh, 
uh, parameters, you will see a populated table. So let's focus what we have here. So here you can see um, this kind of visualize the data that is coming from the entire country, Lao PDR. And here we have rows which are displaying different age categories. And we have uh, columns which uh, displays the gender breakdown, right? So this is a typical type of pivot output that you, you, that you may be familiar when you are using the aggregate uh, component of DHIS2. But the same we can do using the DHIS2 tracker, right? But the difference is this data is coming directly from tracker and not just like what we see in uh, DHIS2 aggregate, okay? So let us try to produce this table by ourselves, right? So what we are going to do here, do that, is to um, click on new so that it uh, clears our existing configuration. And then we will select the table style as pivot, already selected, and the output type as events, right? And then data, we have to select the program. So to produce this output, I will select the program case-based surveillance. And the stage, if you can remember, like we were dealing with results. So the stage has to be the stage three, which is lab results. Okay. Now remember, because I selected event output, it will only pull events from stage three. Nothing else from any other stages we can display in this table. Okay. So now when I do that, I get this uh, box filled with all types of data elements and program attributes, which are related to uh, stage three. Like if the list is uh, too huge, what you can do is you can uh, limit uh, what is displayed here by selecting data elements so that it will only display the data elements or program attributes so that it will only select the program attributes. So let me uh, select a few of them. <clears throat> I will select the age and sex. Age is here. Sorry, sex is here, age. And then uh, I will need the data element, which is the test result, lab test result. Okay, this is the one. So what I did was I just double clicked on each of them so that uh, once it is selected, it will be displayed uh, on this box below uh, with the heading selected data items. So whatever which are displayed here are the ones that are going to be visualized in this uh, output uh, uh, component, which is on to your right. Okay, is that clear? This is same what we do when we were uh, using the pivot table in aggregate component. Right. Um, but let me also show you something else. Now here, when we are defining uh, the data items that we are selecting for the output, uh, you can see few filtering and configurations we can do here, right? So here, like in case if we have now, now for example, this uh, sex uh, attribute has multiple components, right? So here it is asking, it, it has given us the possibility to select, uh, I mean, display, uh, data related to both the genders. So we can actually, what we can do is we can select one of them, like male or female, right? So in case if we select female, it will only display, uh, it will uh, filter the data that we are displaying uh, only to having, uh, having females, not males. So let me deselect that. So I can do some filtering probably uh, so that the lab results, I will only display the positive results, right? Because otherwise I will be populating the table with inconclusive, invalid, negative, not performed, positive. There are so many. So I will just select positive so that only the positive items will be displayed uh, on the table on your right. Okay, right. And let's move on to the yeah, period. Let's select, let's deselect first the last 12 months because if I select this, there'll be another breakdown based on the the month, so I, I deselect last 12 months and I will select this year. Okay, and then the org unit I will select not the use of unit, I can actually select the Lao PDR, which is the country. Okay, right. So, next, what we can do is we can actually click on update to see what the output will be. Right, so I'm getting an output like this. 
So the issue is like, this is not really the similar output that we saw in our, uh, like the already saved item that I displayed to you before, right? Uh, you know why, right? What's the reason? Anybody, you can use the chat. You can unmute. What's the issue here? What do I have to do to make this table look like the one which, which was saved uh, and which I showed you before? We have to change the layout of the table. Exactly. We have to change the layout. Right? So how are we going to change the layout? So if you can recall that previous table, it was having uh, the gender or the sex uh, attribute as the columns and age was, the, was as the rows. Right? Those were the two breakdowns that were there in that table. So what we can do is we will go to layout and we will have we will click and move this sex to the organ dimension, right? And we leave age in the row dimension. So what are we going to do with this lab results and column uh, uh, and uh, the periods and augury? So the thing is like period is this year, we don't really need a breakdown here. So we can uh, move the period to the filter and the augury, it was for the entire country. So we don't, we don't actually need to uh, mention it there. And the lab result, of course, because it was only positive, we can move it to here as a column, but because our last um, output was like, okay, let's, let's do like this so that we will have the test result right at the top and then the gender, and then it will be disaggregated based on row, right? So that's kind of like how I work out uh, based on the, uh, uh, the layout I have in my mind. Because we don't need a, a breakdown uh, based on periods and org unit. I just uh, included that in the report. So let's see whether it uh, appears the way we want. So let me click on update button. Yeah, and here we go. We have the table. But it's still not really the one we wanted. Anything more we can do? Any suggestions? I mean, like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the layout, but yeah. Option, options we deselect uh, this total. Uh, total was in fact there in, in that one. Other than that, anything else? We can, we can eliminate the right. next row. Yeah, exactly. So there are some uh, empty rows. We can get rid of them. So what we can do is we click on options here and then we can click hide empty rows. That's it. Click update. Right. There we go. This is the table that we initially Right. So, okay. Congratulations. We have our first output uh, in the event reports. So, the new stuff we learned uh, uh, on the HIS2 tables here is everything about the configurations you do here the table style, the output type, and how to select data, and then how to select the field. Everything else about, uh, you know, layouts, these options. We have already dealt with them when we were doing the pivot table. Okay, so that's it. That's it on how to create a very simple uh, pivot type uh, table output using event reports. Okay, so let's try to design something quite different. So, uh, do we have any questions in the chat? Not yet. Let's, let's do one more example uh, on a different type, and then we will uh, may, uh, let, you, uh, let you practice on your own. So you have to uh, refer the learner's guide. So in the learner's guide, you have a, um, one exercise where you can practice doing the same what I did now. So let's try to create a line. Again, um, let's open a favorite item. This time I'm going to open something called OVAC Vestos. Do we have it? Yeah. A six and vaccine tape list. This one, the second. I'm going to click, open that. And this is the uh, output that we get. So as you can see, like, what can you see? Okay. We have uh, this output, which is a line list. Okay. We have this line list. Why you call it line list is because it's a uh, it's it's a table which has 
uh, per row, you, you are seeing um, um, some information related to an event. Okay, so you can see we have the date of vaccination, registration, incident date, the organization unit, the national ID, then some attributes of that person, first name, surname, uh, gender, uh, and then we have the vaccine name and the dose now. Right? So this is what we have. And you can scroll all the way down and you will see like this table has 322 pages and altogether it has 32,122 cases or rows, right? It's a kind of a massive table that you see here. And that's why it is paginated so that uh, you, you just don't see the entire table at once, right? Okay. So this is a kind of a line list type of um, uh, visualization. So let us try to um, create the same. So what we are going to do, uh, just like before, is to click on favorites and then new. All right. So let's see what we have to do. So right now, now for this example, the table style is going to be, is it pivot to line list? It is line list, right? not pivot, because here we are going to list out individual events and we are not going to compare the aggregates of uh, uh, between different parameters. So that's why it's going to be a line list. And is this going to be events or enrollment? It is going to be events, right? Not a, a, a kind of a health record across the stages, but we will, even in this example, we will only focus on uh, one stage. So I select event. And the program is uh, COAC COVID-19 vaccine registry, this one. And for the stage, we have only one stage here. So we'll select the vaccination. And uh, now we have to uh, select uh, the parameters. So let me, because it's a huge list, let me just uh, filter only the attributes. And I will select the first name, double click. And then the surname, I double click so it comes here. And then I will also get the national ID and sex. Right? So I have four attributes. And let me now select uh, the data elements, right? Here also we have many, but I will just uh, select the vaccine um, name, this one, and then the dose number. Where is the dose? Dose number. So you see here, I mean, even though this is not related, um, when you are configuring DHS2, this, uh, the, the naming conventions really matter, right? That's why like when you are browsing through a huge list, it is very convenient if you, are, if you follow a proper naming convention. So, because here you have this uh, prefix and then a dash and then everything is kind of uh, arranged in an alphabetical order. So I will select the dose number. Right. Fine, so we have this huge list. So let's do something here. Um, now for the dose number, Let's only select the doses from uh, the dose number one, the first dose, right? So that uh, we don't have a huge uh, list. So I selected first dose and then the period, I deselect the last 12 months and I select this year and org unit. Let me go and select the Lao PDR, which is the country. Okay. And then, um, Let's also uh, figure out the layout first, what we can do. So here, when I click on layout, this is what we have. We will first mention the event date, OP unit, first name, surname, national ID, sex, vaccine, and dose number. So here, if we, in case if we want to, you know, like uh, change the order, like now I, I, I made it such that you will see the surname first and then the uh, first name, right? So that you can do here even before generating the table. Right, so that's it. Let's click on update and see whether we get what we wanted. Click on update, and here we go. We have our line list, right? You can see here, we selected, uh, we, we kind of uh, shuffled uh, the two uh, the, row, uh, the, the parameters. We wanted surname to appear before first name, so that change is reflected here. And you are only seeing data related to first dose, that's why the total event count displayed in this table is 17,000 as opposed to some 30,000 plus rows that we got in our example. Okay. So here, 
Now, what we have is a line list of all the uh, um, events that took place under this program stage. What else we can do? Of course, we can download this. You just have to click on Microsoft Excel or CSV and it will uh, download uh, entire list, the event list, um, which you can open in Excel. So I think this answered uh, some of the questions that were raised on day one, how to get a um, copy of uh, the data that is captured in the tracker. This is the easiest way to get it out. Like you can also, download it from the tracker capture first page line list, but um, you will have a much better control to put the attributes and the event data or the data element, the, the, the values of the data element together and build a table from here. Right? So here you have much better control to obtain an output. Okay. And again, like the other thing that you can do is you can, uh, this we have already demonstrated uh, in our previous academies. They can, like you can click on save as, and you can save um, this item um, uh, to be used later. That's the other thing you can do. This is again, similar to what we always do with the data visualizer and pivot table applications. Right? All right. So uh, I think we can just stop there briefly so that uh, you will be able to practice. So what you have to do is, uh, uh, before that, are there any questions related to the areas that we have covered? Of course, like you may have questions about, uh, you know, enrollments, which we have not uh, touched yet. So if you have any questions related to pivots and line listing related to events, please feel free to ask. Hope it is clear or is it too confusing? I went as slowly as possible, but uh, please let me know if I need to slow down or if I need to speed up a bit. Please let me know. Oh, it's just fine. Do we have a question? No. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Great. Thanks for that feedback. Right. So, I will just stop here. Let's take uh, how much time we have. Uh, right. Let's take 10 minutes. Uh, so what you have to do is you can um, go to Moodle and uh, open event reports and you will find the learner's guide. Do only the first exercise, uh, which uh, illustrate uh, the exact steps that, that were involved in getting the outputs that uh, I just uh, showed you. So only do the first exercise and then we will start uh, in like 10 minutes. Uh, there is a question uh, back to pivot table showing positive test results by age. Since this was an event output, the number of age doesn't actually represent individuals, correct? Since some clients might have more than one positive test result. Yeah, of course. Yeah, true, true. That, that's, that's a limitation because I mean, whenever we use events, mind you, it's always like, say for example, if you have multiple events for the same person for a stage, or like if you have multiple different events, like all these are added together. So, but, but then again, like if you want to uh, say like you have uh, serum samples, urine samples, radiology samples, that you might be able to limit by have, uh, you know, configuring the filters. But uh, I agree with you, like this will uh, have its limitation because uh, uh, the same person might have had multiple events. So this is where enrollment analytics will play a crucial role because that then it will only calculate the enrollment. And again, we have another way of uh, achieving this, like uh, that is of course by using program indicators, like that I'm not going to like, uh, it is not for the uh, uh, line listing, like if you want to get an aggregate count of uh, uh, of uh, number of unique events for a person, you can also try to use program indicators, which uh, we will try to describe tomorrow, right? So not now, but uh, there are other ways of doing that. And also I must mention this event report app is an app uh, which is undergoing a lot of uh, modifications as we uh, as of now. Like so, you will see a much modified uh, application with more features based on a lot of inputs we have received from the DHS community in time to come. So 
this application, what you're seeing now is one of the, uh, like, I mean, like, uh, yeah, we can't call it legacy, but it's, it's a bit of an old app, DHIS2. Uh, so you will be seeing a new events, event reports app in future. So which will uh, try to address most of these limitations that we have in the current version of the, of the app. Any more questions? If not, let's try to uh, take a 10 minutes break where you can uh, practice uh, the, the uh, exercise one in learner's guide. And let me also try to uh, shift my network to a more stable one. 